Good morning, church. Great to see you all in worship this day. Welcome to everyone who's joining us online today as well. I would encourage you to turn to one another, give them a beaming big smile and a friendly wave. That's who we are as a church, right? Good morning all around. Even those who are not waving, good morning to you. If you look at your bulletin insert, you'll see that we have a few things on this week. Checking for choir practice, is it today? And, and, and Wednesday. Okay, this is your weekly double. So, two choir practices this week. We would also lift to you a special event that's happening next Sunday. You see it in your bulletin. Anthony Hamilton is here from Safe Families for Children. He's a volunteer in this organization, works full-time for the state of Illinois, but he is a family coach. So he'll be here, and it's much like what we did when Amy Miller came to visit us from Fairview School. Our plan is to show a short video that describes what Safe Families for Children does, and then he'll give us some stats, talk about the need, but this is an amazing ministry that helps keep kids out of foster care. It gives kids, families, the resources they need to get through times of struggle. You can volunteer as an individual. We give money on our Blue Sunday offering for that, but the other part is that they form teams in churches. And you might just be a resource person, you might run errands, but then there are others that provide childcare and provide transportation for the family. So lots of good things you're gonna love Anthony Hamilton. So tune in for that next week. It's a very special worship service. We're ready to go to worship. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your presence in this very room. We're grateful to be gathered in the midst of our church family. Bless us in this time of worship together. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. For those who are able, would you please stand for our call to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to worship this day. We have come seeking peace and hope. This is the house of the Lord. In it you will find what you seek. Open hearts to God's words and his will. For us. Ask for God's help. Be persistent in prayer. Praise be to God who loves us and cares for us. Amen. Please remain standing and in your chalice, praise hymnal, turn to 73.
This morning I'm reading from Psalm 138 of David. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though, through the Lord is, for though the Lord is high, <clears throat> he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endureth forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. May God put his blessings on the reading of these scriptures. The first time I heard this old expression was back in the 70s, and it was part of the jingle for a breakfast cereal commercial on TV. I'm not going to name the cereal, and I'm certainly not going to sing the jingle, but it went something like, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Start it right with this cereal. Fifty years later, with some Christian perspective, the day you decide to follow Jesus is the first day of the rest of your life with many more first days to come. For instance, the day you're baptized, the day you begin to seek opportunities to share your faith, the day you begin to learn how to love, and the day you begin to learn how to forgive, and the day you commit to giving back to God a portion of what he's given you through your time and financial resources so those in need may share in what we have. And of course, there's so much more. And it's building and expanding on these disciplines that enhance our love for God, our love for each other, and strengthen our faith in Jesus each day for the rest of our lives. It's also one of those first days when we act on giving periodic increases to our time and financial gifts. The first half of verse 24 from Psalm 118 teaches each day is a rich and precious gift from God with new grace and new opportunities. So please be generous in your giving and let today be one of those first days of the rest of your life. So with that in mind, let's receive our morning offering. Thank you.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today, and with it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. prepare ourselves for prayer, I would ask you to pull the bulletin insert and look who's listed there among CCIW prayer partners. You see the SLAM mission trip, that's Service, Leadership, and Mission, a group of the regional church in Detroit this week. And look at that, First Christian Church Springfield. We, we'll probably get a card this week from one of our other 135 church partners around Illinois and Wisconsin, and also First Christian Sterling is there as well. Today, we lift in prayer, especially Linda Franklin and Jennifer Wolford, because it will be one day tomorrow that Mike Franklin passed away. So they have several things in mind uh, to commemorate his passing. So let's be in prayer with them at this very special time. Uh, You see Ruby Houck is on our list and hospice care at home, but if you go catty corner down the page, you see that Ruby is celebrating a birthday tomorrow. So we celebrate that day with Ruby. I understand uh, her day tomorrow will involve family visits and ice cream cake. So a woman after my own heart. So we celebrate that day with Ruby and her family. Uh, Charlie is on the list still, of course, and uh, Jim and Diane. Uh, Edwards. So with all of that and more, let's go to God in prayer. Holy, holy God, we thank you with hearts overflowing with praise for the gifts that you give us. We're grateful for this day. We're grateful for this season in the life of our church. We're grateful for the many ways that you shower your blessings upon us individually and as a family of faith. God, we know that you hear our prayers. You know our concerns. You know our suffering. God, be with those who are sick, who are dying, who are struggling with loss, struggling with addiction. We lift these to you, O God, and 
ask that your will would be done and that the power of your presence be known to all involved. God, each day when we read the news and hear the news, we pray that you could bring peace and justice to our world. And at the same time, we pray that you would show us what our part is in that journey. Put us in the places where you can use our gifts to change the world and to change it one person at a time, starting with each of us. God, we thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for the prayer that he taught us that we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In my 30 plus years of working in the regional church, I have estimated that I drove approximately 600,000 to 700,000 miles. And most of those were in Illinois. And I saw some amazing aspects of nature in those trips. On US 24, between Eureka and Watsika, on Illinois 15, between Albion and Mount Carmel, you look over in the ditch and there's a spot where a six inch plastic tile is there in the ditch and water is running out of it. There's no pump, there's no electric, there's nothing, just water flowing out of the pump. You go, yeah, an artesian well, right? You think about the geology under that, the aquifer, that body of water in the rock, and the rock won't let the water pass through it, and there's water coming in from other places that pushes that water up. And I drive by there and I think, it's a constant flow. It just keeps coming. And really almost any day of the year, even well below freezing, here comes the water. It just keeps flowing. I'm amazed by that. And that's how it is with God's love. That unconditional love just keeps flowing. And we don't have to do anything to make that happen. But that unconditional love changes us. It gives us our reason for living. It gives us more than enough love to share with other people. So we come to this table for that reminder of God's abundance. So we remember Jesus gathered with his disciples and he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And he took the cup and he prayed a blessing on it and he gave it to each of his disciples and said, drink of this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you, poured out for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for who you are and what you do for us. As we take this bread and cup, we will remember to continue praying no matter what is going on in our lives, good and bad. In your name we pray. Amen. Prayerfully, let us partake of the meal together.
Thank you, Grateful Bread. In this sermon series, we're talking about some of the lessons that Jesus taught. In Luke 10, we heard about the Good Samaritan and that Jesus' point was that as members of the realm of God, we should be moved with compassion. If a Samaritan can, certainly you can. Also in Luke 10, there was the lesson about Mary and Martha and This seemed to be a very popular thing last week. I probably had more mentions about that sermon than just about any other that I had preached recently. So the point in that was that there are times that you need to stop serving, that instead of serving, that you are listening and learning, and that Mary had taken the better part of that. So it's saying, let's be Martha, let's be Mary, but not exclusively one or the other. So today, we move into the very next verse, the very next chapter, and that's Luke 11. Now, the lectionary has the first 13 verses, and if you look at that, you're immediately into the Lord's Prayer. So if you read that, you say, not again, right? Didn't we cover that? And you say, yes, we did. So we're not going to dig into that, but there is a special request that precedes that, And the disciples are saying, Lord, teach us how to pray like John the Baptist has taught his disciples how to pray. So Jesus spends this chapter, part of it anyway, on prayer. And you see, and if you read those first few verses, that this is a much shorter version of the Lord's Prayer than what we saw in Matthew. So, We're going to pick up with verse 5, the part that's right after the Lord's Prayer, and Jesus is going to talk about being persistent in prayer, asking God for what you want. And he's giving us in this passage an assurance that God hears our prayers and that God responds to our prayers. So listen to Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. Then he said, imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. An old friend traveling through just showed up, and I don't have a thing on hand. The friend answers me from his bed, don't bother me. The door's locked, my children are all down for the night, and I can't get up to give you anything. But let me tell you, even if he won't get up because he's a friend, If you stand your ground knocking and waking all the neighbors, (laughs) he'll finally get up and give you whatever you need. Here's what I'm saying. Ask and you'll get. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will open. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse, a hide and seek game that we're in. If your little boy asks you for a serving of fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? If your little girl asks you for an egg, do you trick her with a spider? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. And don't you think the Father who conceived you in love will give you the Holy Spirit when you ask him? May God bless to our faith and to our life these words of Holy Scripture. Let's pray. God, we do pray that you would open your word to us this day. We are here to learn. We are here to grow. We are here to know how we can live and how we can serve. We thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the story that Jesus tells here in verses 5 through 8 is really surprising to me. It is not very flattering at all to the neighbor. 
You say, okay, that's just a story. He's saying, no, you're the neighbor. Well, that's not me. I'm not rude. I would not wake up a neighbor in the night. That's not who I am. I consider my neighbor's needs and my neighbor's wants. And Jesus says, but the point is this. Don't be shy. Ask God and stick with it. This isn't let's make a deal or hide and seek or cat and mouse to say, okay, God, if you'll do this and I'll do this. There's no tricks, no tips, no guarantees in any of this. And you heard Cheryl reading in Psalm 138, trust in God's love. Trust God and God's provision. So one of the big points today is that God will always hear our prayers and will always respond to our prayers. Now, it may not be exactly what we ask for. I had a friend in college that she took the Bible very literally and she needed a car. So she wanted a brand new red Camaro and she prayed for that every day. I assure you she did not get that Camaro. I'm sure eventually she got a car, but I'm not sure what that car was. The point is, it's not a one-to-one correspondence. And, you know, our experience, we might say, contradicts the words of Jesus, that we have asked and not received, that we have searched and not found. And in spite of our most earnest prayers, we've lost loved ones, cancer. We prayed for protection and people have still died. We pray for peace around the world and we continue to hear stories of violence. We pray for God's goodness to be known and we're reminded regularly of the evil in the world. So if God answers prayers, where's the disconnect here? Why are so many prayers, why do they seem to go unanswered? There is no simple answer. Although we will hear some simple answers, I cannot believe that everything happens for a reason. I hear people say that, especially, you know, when bad things happen or someone dies, that God has a purpose in these bad things. Clearly, not everything that happens is God's will. God's not pulling the strings. God's not making things happen. And we'll admit that there is evil in the world. And sometimes that's just simply a consequence of our own or someone else's selfishness. So it's the consequence of their decisions, of our decisions and our actions. I think there are times that sometimes what we pray is not reasonable or wise. You know, what is your prayer when your parent is dying? Do you say, Father of God, I want my mother to live forever? That's not going to happen. But are we open to various kinds of responses that could be given for our loved ones, even if they don't physically survive? Jesus is telling us in this scripture to trust God and to trust that God will respond to our prayers. He's saying God cares about us. He's saying you care about your children, right? If your children ask you for food, you're not going to give them a snake or a spider. God, who loves us even more, wants what's good for us, is not going to send us something awful. So if we believe that God is loving and generous, then how should we pray? I think it starts with, like we said during our study of the Lord's Prayer, to pray daily or pray many times a day. We can always have that prayer, help me Jesus, help me now. I would like you to follow that from time to time with thank you Jesus or thank you God. But I believe in the power of prayer. 
And in the power of prayer, I think the first thing is that we have to believe. We have to believe that God hears our prayers and that God responds. Second, we have to trust that God is with us and that God wants what's good for us. And then third is to be persistent. You've heard me say this phrase a lot of times, practice makes better. So the more we pray, the better we are at praying, whatever our style or variety of styles might be. It becomes more a part of who we are, and it becomes part of our lifestyle, I think, for prayer. And as we mature in our life of faith, I have to believe that the nature of our prayers change as well. That instead of insisting on a particular outcome to a situation, we pray God's presence. We pray that God's will would be done in that circumstance. And like you heard in the pastoral prayer today, that we pray that we can be a part of helping God's will become a reality. In our more mature prayers, I think we are open to a variety of responses that God might give. But the point is that we pray and we keep praying. It's the persistence. I really think that this is one of our best go-to spiritual practices. I think it's a foundation for all of our other spiritual disciplines if we have a desire to live closer to God. Uh, a friend of mine, minister, uh, wrote and gave a devotion on this particular scripture this week in the lectionary. And this is a guy who is physically fit. That he, in the past anyway, has had a very normal regimen of running, biking, and yoga. And he made the point, and I agree, that we, if we want our muscles to be strong and to be long, to be stretched, we don't just do that once a week, right? You say, come on, I exercise for 30 minutes every Saturday morning. I don't know why I'm not better. Okay, now we'll switch it to prayer and say, every Sunday morning I pray. So if you want your muscles to be stronger, if you want to be able to stretch more, your muscles to be longer, you do it more often. You do it daily. You do it more than once a day. So it's just like in prayer. If we pray regularly, if we pray without ceasing, what difference will it make? Our relationship with God develops. It deepens when we pray, that we do feel more trust in God, feel more love from God, and I think we more freely express our love and gratitude to God. So the bottom line, God will always hear our prayers. God will respond to our prayers. It may not be exactly what we ask for, exactly what we want, but sometimes it just might. Here's a story. Maybe you've heard this before. It's entitled, An Audacious Prayer of an Orphan Girl. And it's said to be a true story written by a nurse missionary in the Congo. She served there for 20 years. One night she was helping a mother in labor with a premature baby. They did all they could for mother and child, but the mother died. And at that orphanage, they did not have an incubator. They didn't have a way of keeping that baby warm and alive. So this woman leaves this premature baby and a two-year-old daughter. They said, okay, we have a hot water bottle. Let's fill that up and put it, wrap it up with the baby. They get out the hot water bottle and it breaks. And they think, how do we get this baby through the next few days? There aren't any drug stores nearby. There's not a Congo Walmart down the road. So the next day, Nurse Helen is with the kids at the orphanage. And she does this on a daily basis, praying with the kids. But before she prays, she tells them 
about this little baby and the two-year-old sister. So a 10-year-old in the group, her name is Ruth, she prayed, please God, send us a water bottle. It'll be no good tomorrow, God. The baby will be dead. So please send it this afternoon. And while you're at it, could you please send a dolly for the little girl so she'll know how much you really love her? Helen was shocked. Deep down, she didn't believe that God could do this. There were just too many problems, too many obstacles in that. You know, the only way that they could get a hot water bottle is that if somebody sent them a water bottle. At this point, Helen had been serving in Africa for four years. She had never received a package from home. So, who's going to send a hot water bottle to the equator, right? So she's in a class, she's teaching in the nurse's training school, and she gets a message that there's a car at her front door. And as soon as she can, she leaves the classroom, goes back to her place, the car is gone, but there's a box sitting there on the veranda. You think, could this be? So she takes the box in and has the kids gather around. They open the box, and it's filled with knitted jerseys, shirts for all of the children. So they're looking through, feeling through, all of that, and she's saying, okay, that's what we get. We get shirts. And she reaches in and feels something, and it's a hot water bottle. And you think, how could that be? Brand new. Ruth, the one who had prayed, said, if God sent the bottle, he must have sent a dolly too. And they go digging in the box, and there it is, a doll for the two-year-old. That box had been sent by the nurse's former Sunday school class five months earlier. The leader in that class had gotten what she called a prompting from God to put in a hot water bottle. And one of the girls in that church said, I want to give a doll to an African girl. So five months ahead, the pieces were put in place for that prayer to be answered. I believe that God answers prayers. Not always in big, miraculous ways like that that could save the life of a premature baby. It's not always this one-to-one -one transaction. But the point is, be consistent. Stay close to God in your life. Get your spiritual exercise in on a daily basis. It makes a world of difference. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for always hearing us, for always being with us. God, help us to live life closer to you, to know you more, to follow your will, to be in tune. God, thank you for all good gifts. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we sing our hymn of dedication and invitation, if you would like to dedicate your life to Christ or renew your faith, to make your first confession of faith, or to transfer your membership, we would invite you to come forward as we sing this hymn, Wherever You Go, number 182. You may stand as we...
may be seated. We welcome Debbie and Larry Colvin into our church family this day. They moved to Springfield several months ago. They've ordered furniture. Some of it will be here soon. Or later. That's right. They, they know stories about serving overseas. You'll remember that they were here last fall, gave us this gift from Ghana, and told us lots of stories. They've now moved to town and want to be a part of us. Some of you know that Larry grew up here and that there are stories that can be told. They both have great gifts to give. They are delightful souls. Debbie transfers her membership here from St. John's UCC Church in Union, Illinois. Went online and looked at that. It seems a delightful little church. And also, First Christian Church in St. Joseph, Missouri. Larry transfers his membership to us from First in St. Joseph, Missouri. So, we ask you to repeat the good confession. Do each of you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you commit to live your life with him? We do. Good answer. Congregation, you have an opportunity to respond. If you would open your chalice hymnal, the Fatter book, to number 341, we will read that together. So we'll give you time to move to 341. These words are for Larry and Debbie. Ready? Reaffirming our own faith in Jesus the Christ, we gladly welcome you into this community of faith, enfolding you with our love and committing ourselves to your care. In the power of God's Spirit, let us mutually encourage each other to trust God and strengthen one another to serve others, that Christ's church may in all things stand faithful. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the blessing of this day, for this time, for this joining in our church family. God, the blend of gifts that you give to us, that blend is miraculous. Help us, O oh God, to bind our family of faith together in your love. Help us to follow your lead, to be the people you call us to be. We are so grateful this day for Larry and for Debbie, for their decision to join us here. Bless us all in these days ahead. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Debbie, Larry, welcome to this congregation. Larry, welcome home. Let's hear it. Right after the sending forth, I would invite you to come forward after you don your masks and greet Larry and Debbie as you leave the sanctuary. Go forth. From this place, blessed by God's abundance, the God who hears our prayers and answers our prayers. Live in God's love. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>